Welcome everyone, today we are going to implement our custom cross-cutting concerns in the application layer using .NET Core and Mediator library. So let's start, let me show you the architecture and the problem of our application. By the way, this is the real life example. This problem and the solution was taken from my uh, current project in my company. So what this application is all about? The main responsibility of the application is to do a lot of calls to external systems. Uh, mostly it is done by calling the REST API or SOAP API or whatever in HTTP layer, you know, and uh, and based on those requirements there is an architecture like that. So we have uh, basically two, the most important for us layers here is the services and the clients. Also, I draw here an external systems with such endpoints, etc, etc. So basically what is the responsibility of the client? The clients just do calls to external systems and return the response as it is for our services. And our services are composing and managing the models in some way and return it back to our controllers or something like that. So basically what is the problem? There might be a lot of services as well, clients, so it may be about 10 or 20 clients, objects and the same for the services. And for example, we got the task to do some cross-cutting concerns. For example, we need to measure the time, the request response time for all the clients in order to know how long does it take to request response some external system, etc. doing some alerts, whatever. And for the same purpose, we also might need to have some cross-cutting concerns in services, for example, to cut some statistics and logging, for example, we need to log how much results are presented to the front-end or any client here. So basically, there may be a need for cross-cutting concerns and... Uh, okay, let me show the little sample application which I have implemented before. So here, it is... Basically, there are two .NET Core API applications. The service is stands for our external system and the API stands for our those two layers and the, our application. In the real project, for sure, we don't have any access to mutate the external system, so we need to handle it somehow by our results. So, we have the only one controller with the only one service and on the our external system we also have one controller but with two endpoints and those two endpoints are called by our client which is called services client here we have two endpoints and we call those endpoints in our services service uh, here and here somehow organize our information gather it together and return it to our controller for sure and then controller is presenting this information to any client, for example, front end or mobile. So basically, this is the sample for sure. In real application, we would have a much more clients and services, and we need to add somehow cross cutting concerns here. So, what is the solution for that problem? Actually, we decided to use the mediator pattern because for sure we have. Uh, some kind of cross-cutting concerns in .NET Core natively, for example, the middleware, but the problem with middleware is that it can be put here or here. And this is the problem because our service and client is instantiated in the controller and uh, our main application behavior is also in scope of the controller, so we need to put our cross cuttings somewhere here, not before the calling of the controller and not after the controller have done its work. Okay, so here we have installed our mediator and mediator extension Microsoft Dependency Injection. And in order to add our 
mediator library, we need to paste here some comment or query which implements the iRequest interface. What does it mean at all? So for example, if we need to add uh, some cross-scan concern for our services client, we need to go to the calling site. In our case, it is our service. And we need to change those direct calls to client to calls by mediator. What does it mean actually? We need to paste here our mediator. And then we need to create request handlers for all of the requests for our clients here. So for di and uh, registering our mediator library, we should put in our type of some of the queries or comments which implements the iRequest interface here. For example, we can choose one of the either this additional info query or service query. And that's all for now. We have our mediator library registered to our application. And now let's continue to make our indirect calls to mediator instead of clients in our service. Okay, now we can drop our services client at all from the service. All the calls are done through the mediator right now. And let's implement our handlers for our services query and additional info query. Okay, so the handlers are here and they just replace the same behavior from our services to itself. And now since we are calling our clients through the mediator object, this request will go through the all pipelines which we have registered before. So let me create our basically cross-cutting pipeline behavior. For simplicity, the pipeline behavior in Mediator is something like the middleware in a .NET Core. All requests which goes through the iMediator will try to go through this particular pipeline behavior. But we need also register it like in the case of registering our middlewares. As you can see, we also have so similar next delegate, which called the next pipeline in our mediator, but it's not our native .NET Core pipeline right now. So that's it. Right now, if we call our clients through the mediator object, we will go to this point and let me show that. So basically, let's try our both applications and we can go to that import by the service route, as you can see. Something like that. Okay, we are here right now. We instantiate our query, pass this query to mediator, and yes, nothing happens because we didn't inject our client's behavior or we didn't register it here. For now, just register it as an open type, open generic type. I'll explain you later why we should do like that. 
let's check it again okay as you can see our request goes first to our pipeline here is our request it is empty object basically and this is our next delegate which goes to our query handler here so let me go through and yes we're here we got our object back and then this next has already had our response and it can return it back yes for now we have our information mocked information here you can see that it's really true this is our mocked information here and the same stands for our another query but what if we need to somehow decouple our pipeline behaviors for example i would like to have a separate pipeline behavior for services separate pipeline behavior for clients and for some particular client request or particular client response i would like to have separate clients pipeline behavior etc so how we can manage it because there are there is no a lot of sense just to grab all the requests through this pipeline because we need to handle it like if request is some particular model then and a lot of ifs will be there in such case so how we can split this for that purpose our dotnet has a constraints of the generics and we can specify here what exactly query we need to handle it uh, based on uh, response type or request type so let me create uh, client queries some share it for example i client i client query interface and this will be just a, a, an empty interface yes some of you may say that it's anti-pattern yes but uh, for example in microsoft sample application uh, called eShop and containers they are also using such uh, empty interfaces like markers of our objects so i think we are pretty good of using this and now we can mark our particular queries with this interface and constrain our pipeline behavior to handle only this interfaces yes and that's all yes now that's all now what is the behavior of our application the request will go to that pipeline only in case the t request type implements the iClient query interface only in that case so in our example our request will go to, to to this client's pipeline behavior only for our services query because only that service query is implementing this iClient query for additional info query this query doesn't implement it so it will not send our request through the client's pipeline behavior and let me show this for you okay so let me call the service so go here firstly service query it should go to our clients pipeline behavior yes it is here good now we return the response to the, our service and try to get the additional info yes and now we got the exception and uh, i'll show you how to solve it in a minute this exception actually told you that it cannot instantiate our pipeline behavior because actually our query doesn't meet the constraint placed in our client's pipeline behavior and this is actually the problem because now you cannot split our request between pipelines because 
some of the mediator sent methods will cause our application to fail by that particular exception. And what is the workaround of that issue? Basically, the problem here, I have investigated it already. The problem here is we're using the 3.1 Target framework, our .NET Core target framework, and if we choose to .NET Core up five, it will be good. And I'll show it in a minute for you. But as an actual workaround, if you cannot, for some reasons, to change our uh, target framework to 5.0, then what I suggest, it is not the best solution I have ever seen for sure, but you can get rid of this constraint here and just manage it here for example if type of key request is equal to something or if request is I you, you know you, you got the point I think we need to check it manually imperatively in our uh, this method uh, so to what pipeline we should go with this request and then we just need to implement a particular different objects for handling this load or for example uh, we can use here a strategy along with factory patterns in order to handle those particular requests or whatever whatever it it is more tricky it is it has more complexity on it etc etc if you can change our target framework it's better just to change it once and we will not get this error anymore. So I'll change it to .NET 5 and as you can see my target framework has been changed. Let's start and I'll show you that this error will never begin here. Okay, so let's check, call the service and we also get it here. Why? Because we we did change our constraint here and now this pipeline handles all the requests. Let me change it back. Yes, we're trying for additional info query. And yes, we didn't get our request in our pipeline. So, what are the benefits of this solution? Once we put everything up, we indirect our calls to mediator object, etc., etc. We can handle almost any cross-cutting requirements from customer or from our delivery manager, whatever. What is the backwards of this solution? The backward is only one for my point here. We need to indirect all of the requests to our client and it is the most tricky one we can for example for my almost 10 services and about 12 clients it takes me about one or two days to change every call to client and to service to mediator calls you know and um, if you know that uh, you will have a lot of cross-cutting concerns requirements i think it's better to implement initially everything through the mediator object so that you can easily extend later but it is what it is you also can get rid of the client service at all and uh, you can follow only with uh, queries and make all of your behavior in clients but the problem here is with uh, reusable behavior because with mediator there is such a challenge to reuse some of your behavior in different handlers etc etc okay guys so thank you for watching my video you can find this particular repository in my github account below the video also please subscribe to me on facebook in uh, LinkedIn in Instagram. I'm doing some content in my Instagram channel. So thank you for watching again and see you later. Bye